Okay, so 7-2, uh, finding common denominators. I've already got, given you guys a, a, a short lesson on this. And I think for most of you, you're understanding what's going on here. So here's a word problem. It says, Sue wants half of a rectangle pan of cornbread, and Dina wants a third of the same pan of cornbread. How should you cut the cornbread so that each girl gets the size portion she wants? So uh, we have a half and we have a third. And so um, what we've been doing the last few minutes is finding a common denominator. And if you remember the very first step I said to do was to see if one is a multiple of the other. Well, two doesn't fit evenly into three or three into two. So the next easiest step, and I think it should be pretty much obvious to everybody, is to multiply the two together. And so six would be a common denominator. Okay. Um, not worried about the bottom part. You can put a line through that. Let's turn the page here. We're on page 274. This is a good example. Tyrone partitioned, that means he divided up a rectangle into thirds. And so here's thirds. Okay. Now, I'm going to I'm going to redraw this triangle here just to show you guys something. Let's say here's the same triangle and they went in this direction to divide it into thirds could you also do it vertically sure you could have gone like this that's also thirds this is one third this is one third and this is one third and in the example they gave us this is a third and this is a third and this is a third all right so those will work um and then it says how could you partition the rectangle um, of the same size so that you see thirds and fourths. Okay, so here's fourths. And here's the rectangle, the same rectangle, divided into thirds and fourths. Okay. So if you went down this way four times, each one of those would be a fourth. And then it says the fractions one-third and one-fourth can be renamed with the equivalent fractions. And you'll notice that the common denominator for one-third and one-fourth is 12. And that they divided this rectangle by thirds and by fourths. And there's going to be 12 individual equal parts. So that's a good example. Um, put a line through the bottom of the page. I'm not worried about that. Let's go over to page 275. And they talk about a couple different ways to find a co common denominator. And they've got an example of two-thirds and five-sixths. And one way they did it um, is they multiplied two by six, and that gave us 12 on the top, and then three by six, and that's 18. And they did the same thing here with five-sixths, as far as they multiplied five by three is 15, and six by three is 18. So here's our common denominator. This, is, this second way they give an example of is the very first way I told you guys to do this, which is um, look to see if one is the multiple of the other. Then the guided practice down below. It says in the example on the previous page, um, how many twelfths are in one third section of Ty Tyrone's triangle. How many twelfths are in one third section of Tyrone's triangle? Okay. So look, each one of these is a twelfth. All those little squares are a twelfth. Every one of them. I'm not going to 
fill in each one. But I just want you to get the idea. All those are a twelfth. And the question is, um, how many twelfths are in each one-third section of Tyrone's triangle? Let's go back over here. The third, okay? So we're going this way. Each one of these, this one, this one, and this one, is one-third. How many twelfths are in one of those thirds? One, two, three, four. So I'll just draw a little arrow here and put four. And then it says, how many twelfths are in each one quarter section of Sally's triangle? Okay. I can look at the same triangle. I don't have to use this one. So, um, in each quarter, so this would be a quarter. Here's a quarter. Here's a quarter. Each one of those is a quarter going up and down. And how many are in each quarter? One, two, three. And I'll just put a little three right here. Okay. These are, that page 274, that's a good visual aid for those of you that kind of struggle understanding this. Um, how do you know in 2 and 3 find the common denominator for each pair of fractions? Let me pull a stick here. Mr. Spears, for number 2 right here, 3 eighths and 2 thirds, what's a common denominator? Um, well, 3 doesn't go into 8 evenly. And that's the very first thing I suggested you guys to do is that... Um, see if one is a multiple of the other okay so three does not fit into eight evenly so what's what's the next thing you could do yeah so what's eight times three 24 so a common denominator for three eighths and two thirds would be 24. what's a common denominator mr spears i'm going to keep picking on you Four, six, and three. Well, three, six, and six. Yes. Right. So six would be an obvious common denominator because three fits into six evenly. All right. That's what they want you to do here with all these problems down below. Some of these should look familiar to you because I think I did some or some similar to it. So what we just did here in these two. I want you guys to do at the bottom of this page and um, let's see here um, some of them don't go in evenly uh, some of them are pretty obvious others would be a little bit harder and you'll have to multiply the two together to get a common denominator okay all right let's look at the next page Let's look at number 12 here. It says, explain any mistakes in the renaming <coughs> of the fractions below. So we're starting with three quarters and somebody changed it to nine twelfths. And we started with two thirds and somebody changed it to six twelfths. I'm not gonna do anything else other than ask you to show the correct renaming because they've made a mistake somewhere. I want you to look at it and think about it. Number 13, it says for keeping business records every three months of a year is called a quarter. How many months are equal to three quarters of a year? Explain how you found your answer. Now just think about that. How many months are in a year? 12, there's 12 months in a year. Okay, 12 months in a year. Think about that one. Uh, let's see here. 
Nelda, whoever that is, baked two kinds of pasta in pans. Each pan was the same size, so here's the two pans. They're the same size, but you can see that they're divided evenly. This one is divided into sixths, and this one is divided into eighths. Um, she sliced the other pan into eighths. Let's see, how can the pans of pasta now be sliced so that both pans have the same sized pieces? Hmm. Draw on the pictures to show your work. Oh, okay. So I can see one way to do it. So we need to divide these pans further so that both pans have the same sized pieces. Um, well, here's my thought. That looks a little out of focus. Let me uh, change that. Here we go. What if I drew a line here and drew a line here? And drew a line here and drew a line here does that work I don't think so wait one two three four one two three four oh I think it does one two three four one two three now they're still not the same size pieces that doesn't work hmm. well um, is that what they're asking for we're gonna make sure how can the pans of pasta now be sliced so that both pans have the same sized pieces hmm Hmm. Well, I'd have to stare at that for a minute and think about it. Uh, my first thought was wrong, which uh, happens more often than I like. So I'll let you guys think about that. We'll see if one of you can come up uh, by tomorrow with the correct answer. And I used a pen, so I can't erase my answer. That was silly. Oh, well. So that's not the correct answer. So I'll let you guys figure that one out. See if you can. Number 15, so when you practice, when you try to do this, use a pencil. That way, if you make a mistake, uh, you can erase it. Let's look at 15 here. It says, what is the price of premium, premium gasoline rented to the nearest dollar, rented to the nearest dime, rented to the nearest penny? Oh, this is going back a couple months. We're rounding. So, uh, premium gasoline rounded to the nearest dollar so when we're talking about dollar we are talking about right here okay and if you remember about rounding if the number just to the right of it is five or larger then you would round it up one if it's less than five you would keep it the same and then round it to the nearest dime Okay, and then round it to the nearest penny. So this would be the tenths place, and this would be the pennies place, where the four is. And 16 and 17, looks like it's multiple choice down at the bottom of the page. I think you guys could do that on your own. Um, that's it for the lesson. And how are we doing on time here? We're doing pretty good. Yeah. This is your...